Hi guys, this week we'll be painting a custodian card. As usual, I started off with a base coat of chaos back for a spray can. Using a brush, I painted the entire model of Viking gold. You can use an airbrush for this if you like to. I, uh, some of my viewers, they don't always like me using an airbrush, so I decided to do it by brush this time. Using Reichland Flash Shade, I then washed all the golden parts of the model. Once this is dry, I made a mixture of one part Viking Gold and two parts Dwarven Gold and I applied a highlight uh, on the entire armor of the model. I made sure I left the recesses visible. Using flat black, I then painted in all the, the cables the model has. He has a couple of them and the flat black is a nice matte black color. After this I made a mixture of two parts turquoise and one part black and I blocked in the blade of the, of the sword. Using dark grey blue, I blocked in the casing of the bolter. Then I used gun metal and blocked in all the metallic parts. On the left shoulder I painted the open parts the gun metal as well. Using dark flesh stone I then uh, painted in all the leather parts and the hairs. I used this as a base color for the red on the hair. The red will just go on easier in this way. It will have a far better coverage than over the pure black. Using non oil, I then washed the bolter casing and all the metallic parts. Then, using scarlet red, I paint the hairs of the model. No need to be um, precise at this stage, just block in the entire hair. Using Agrax Earthshade, I then wash all the leather parts on the model. By doing this, I, get, uh, I can achieve a nice shading effect later on. Using Caro Burke Crimson, I then wash the hair. This is to get the shading in on the hair. It will make the independent hairs nicely visible for later on painting. In a four part turquoise and one part black mixture, I then apply a highlight to the sword. I stay on the outside. And this, don't, this doesn't need to be uh, really thin. You want this to be nicely visible. Using a mixture of two parts dwarven gold and one part polished gold, I then apply a next highlight to all the golden parts of the model. I make sure I leave the previous layers visible to get a nice transition on the gold. As a last step on the armor, I use pure polished gold to just highlight the 
the ornaments on the armor. This will make them stand out a bit more so that the armor doesn't appear to be um, flat on these areas. Using pure turquoise, I then apply a next highlight to the blade. I do this in the exact same manner as the previous highlight, only making sure I, I leave the previous highlight a little bit visible. Using silver, I now paint over the gun metal on the uh, left shoulder pad. And I also use the silver to apply an edge highlight to all the metallic parts. I choose to use an edge highlight technique instead of dry brushing because the entire armor is painted in this manner. And it would um, look really weird if one part's dry brushed and the other part's uh, painted in this manner. So you might want to just dry brush all the gold on, but I prefer this manner. Uh, on this large amount of gold. Using then, using Drucci Violet, I wash the silver on the left shoulder pad. Once this is dry, I do the same thing with Carlberg Crimson, making sure that it, it sticks nicely to the edges of the silver. Using dark grey blue, I then apply a, a rough edge highlight to the bolter casing. Um, this might be a, a, a bit thicker than a really thin edge highlight because it's going to be followed by a thin edge highlight of uh, gold grey, what you can see here. Using scarlet red, I then apply a highlight to the hair. I try and pick out every hair I can find in a top-down manner, so I don't bother to go on the underside of the hair and paint that. Only if it's really well visible from the side, I'll paint it with the scarlet red. In a one-to-one -one mixture, this is repeated using scarlet red and bloody red. And now I stay on, on the upside of the model. And then using pure bloody red, uh, I apply a final highlight on the most upper parts of the hair. Using bright bronze, I now block in the bullet casings in the in the bolter magazine. And using silver, I repaint part of the left shoulder and make sure the washes, the effect I applied with the washes, is still visible in the edges. And then using Agrox Earthshade, I wash the, bolt, uh, the bullet casings in the, in the magazines. With a mixture of one part dark flesh tone and one part leather brown, I apply a uh, a highlight to the latter parts of the model. This is then followed by an edge highlight of leather bra. The model has a, a couple of ropes uh, where some ornaments are hanging on. I painted those khaki. Uh, 
and once this is dry I wash it with Agrox Earth Shade. Be careful with the Agrox Earth Shade to not um, mess on the make a mess of the model. Using bright bronze I then highlight the bullet casings in the magazine. And with khaki I highlight the ropes where the ornaments are hanging on. Using black I paint all the gems on the model. The edge of the gems or the gem holder I painted silver before. With a mixture of two parts flat black and one part dead white I then highlight all the the wires or the cables that the model has. I then add one part dead white to, the, to this mixture and I apply a thin edge highlight to the, to the cables. Using pure turquoise I now make a, a, a half a moon like shape on the bottom of the gems. I also paint in the eyes with the turquoise. With the turquoise and that white in a one-to-one -one mixture, I make uh, the same shape but a bit thinner, so leaving the turquoise visible. As for the eyes, I make a thin line in the center of the eye. Using that white, I paint a dot on the opposite side on the gem make a reflection effect and for the eyes it's the same thing a thinner line in the center of the eye then using dragon of nightshade I wash the eyes thinly I applied a bit much there I covered it up later using electric blue I then apply uh, a next highlight to the blade. I only pick the raised parts and the highest parts. I try to create some transition from the bottom to the top of every part. I also start with the electric blue to make an outline for the lightning effects I'll, I'll be painting on later. In this, um, in this recording it, it's a bit thin, you might want to do it a bit, uh, in a, a bit thicker line. Uh, no, not using thicker paint, but just have the line a bit thicker than I did. Using a mixture of uh, one part electric blue and two part dead white, I'm now going to reinforce the lightning effects and drag this onto the raised parts a bit to have the highlights and a better transition in the, on the color on the blade. This is then followed by really thin lines of dead white to create the lightning effect. And as you can see, this is what I meant. Because I had a, uh, the electric blue was too thin, so now the white doesn't really come out nicely. Once that layer is done, I um, applied a coat of matte varnish on the entire model. Once that's dry, I use gloss varnish to um, put on the gems give them a nice glossy effect. And after that I use clear red from Tamiya to paint in the, uh, the silver uh, squares on the left shoulder pad. This will give them the candy red effect. And that also is the last stage of the model. So guys I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe if you want to. Uh, dislike if you want to. Please let me know what's, uh, what you didn't like about the video. 
and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.